Um, through investigation and response, we determined there was a shooter on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay. Um, officers responded to that location and engaged the suspect at that location. He is dead currently. Somebody's fucking around keeps calling after we kill that motherfucker. So there's one more or two more. Okay, keep that in mind. They already killed them and they were still getting called. Suspect down in Mandalay Bay, 32nd floor, SWAT OIS. So we probably shot him. That one's down. Right. Mandalay Bay security was fantastic. We would not have uh, engaged this individual in the time lapse that we did uh, without their assistance. Uh, we're executing a search warrant on the room as we speak. Um, there was a team of six officers that approached security. Uh, they went up uh, up the elevators after discussing the situation with the security and, get, and uh, obtaining intelligence. And they checked each floor by floor until they located where they believed to be the room. Uh, subsequently, they approached the room, uh, received gunfire. They backed off and SWAT responded. And there was no smoke. dinner with uh, two other co-workers um, we basically split up around 8 30 i had gone upstairs so i was actually watching the rest of the sunday night football game and um had, had gone to sleep i would say right around 10 o'clock i woke up to the sound of gunshots um it was i didn't really know what was going on initially i kind of thought that it may have been some fireworks and then it just kept going and going and going so i called the the front desk you know and told them that I was hearing some stuff that I thought was maybe gunpowder and, um, you know, I could smell the gunpowder and, you know, they basically said they were aware of a situation and just to remain calm and, and kind of barricade yourself inside your room. At that point, they, I guess the guy had killed himself and they decided to breach his room. So I heard a, a major explosion and I honestly thought that it was like a terrorist attack at that point that, you know, somebody was trying to blow up the, the hotel. So I just kind of immediately called my wife, you know, because I didn't know what was going on. Um, you know, just kind of said, I love you. And, you know, and then uh, I could hear the police making their way up the hallway. They were opening the doors very aggressively. And um, about six or seven SWAT team guys came in and, you know, just made sure that I wasn't, uh, you know, a bad person, that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. And basically they ushered us out and told us to run as far and as fast as we could. This I mean, is the first time I've actually been out and looked at the outside of the building, so too. So it's uh, definitely very brings it a lot closer to home. My room was one f right directly below the room where the shooter was. Go look out the window, don't see anything, don't think a whole lot more about it, and then look just a short bit later, more volleys go off. And at this point in time, I can see it, I can hear it echo uh, in the windows a lot worse. So that's my assumption at that point is when he switched rooms. It was actually a little bit more surreal. It was more of a kind of get distance between me and the window because I was also hearing debris hit my window, uh, assuming possible shell casings or glass debris. They did use explosives to breach the room. Uh, that was a little unnerving. Stay in your room, stay in your room, stay in your room. 
kind of spent the day mulling around the casino and then had dinner. And uh, then I went back to my room to kind of have an early night. And um, I was on the phone with my husband. We were FaceTiming with each other when the shooting started. And uh, I immediately knew that it was a shooter, um, but I couldn't tell where it was coming from. It was just really loud, multiple gunshots. So I started kind of running around my room while I was on the phone with my husband, looking out the panoramic windows, trying to figure out where it was coming from. And my windows actually faced the festival. So I immediately thought that would be where it might be coming from. It it was just really, really loud. Um, I think the shooter was three or four rooms down from me and uh, on the same side. We were on the same side of the hotel together. So... um, I couldn't exactly tell where the shooting was coming from. It was just, it was really loud. And then there would be the brakes, which now I know is obviously when he was reloading. Um, and my husband could hear it on the phone. And at first he wanted to tell me it wasn't a shooter. He was trying to reassure me, but I knew it was. So I put him on hold and I called the front desk and, um, I said, is there a shooter in the hotel? <laughs> and they said to me, ma'am, we don't know what's going on. And, and I said, well, I really think there's a shooter in the hotel. I can hear it. It's really loud. Um, and she just said, ma'am, stay in your room. We don't know what's going on. So I hung up the phone with her, and I went back to the windows. And at this point, I was crouching down, hiding, because I didn't know, again, where the shots were coming from. And at this point, I was um, leaning kind of up against the wall where I could look out the panoramic windows. And at that point, I could see the flash of the gunshot kind of down the way. So I could tell that it was... It was parallel with me a few windows down. Um, And that's when I knew for sure that the shooter was in the building. And um, my husband just said, turn off all the lights and hide and um, in the room. So I did that and, you know, stay away from any walls where any bullets could come through. So that's what I did. I just um, hid and tried to watch out the window as much as I could. And that's when I started seeing The police officers arrived at the concert across the street, and the shots just kept going on and on and on. I think it lasted for about 20 minutes. And then I finally could hear um, the police officers' radios in the hallway. So I told my husband, I think the police are here. I think the police are here. Let me call you back. I hung up the phone with him, and at that moment, that's when I heard them blow the door. Um, They Actually, I didn't know what it was. It was just a really loud noise, and I decided to go out in the hall. (laughs) And um, when I did that, I saw this a, a large group of police officers and I think SWAT team. There was probably ten or twelve of them that I could see outside of his outside of the door, which now I know was the shooter's room door. And it was just down the way from me. Like I said, three or four rooms down. I, c- I can't tell. And um, I heard them yelling inside the room. They were yelling. They yelled things like "Get down!" And I don't I don't know if he was already down. I don't know what the situation was, um, and they turned and looked at me and yelled at me and told me to get back in my room immediately. And so I did, and I called my husband back and told him. Okay, let me ask. Uh, Did police or security guards uh, fire any shots uh, any time during the encounter? Um... During while he was discharging his weapons, yes. we are not aware of that. No security guard or police other than the encounter at the room. that you continue to listen to me. 
Nobody is attempting to hide anything, referenced this investigation.